Okay, for those of you that are first time viewing my channel, uh, we build movie prop cars here in Dallas, Texas at my shop, Bob's Prop Shop. We build replicas of the Back to the Future car, the DeLorean, Ghostbusters, Knight Rider. I mention that because you may see some of these cars laying around in the background and you're gonna wanna ask questions. I have recently moved to Las Vegas for our second location there where I'm living and opening my shop. I go back and forth from there all the time. And I've used a couple of different trucks to do that over the last couple of years. And I really needed something uh, reliable, fast and strong for hauling these big trailers and things. And, you know, out in West Texas, the speed limit's 85 miles an hour. I see these trucks passing me going 90 to 100 miles an hour, hauling 30, 40 foot trailers with six or eight cars on their back, hauling ass. And I'm like, damn, I wish I could do that. Well, you know, my other truck was a 7.3 liter turbo diesel Ford Excursion. No slouch. Everybody knows that's a great truck, but that thing just won't do what this truck will do. And then I have an international 4300 truck, which is back there. Great truck again, but it just won't go more than about 70 miles an hour. This gosh darn thing is a hot rod. And thanks to Banks Power, it's even more so. Let's talk about all the things that I've done to this truck. Behind me is my international 4300 Durastar. Uh, it's an ambulance. So I bought an old fire department ambulance, turned it into a camper. You can find the videos about that here on my channel if you want to learn more about that. And I've been using this to go back and forth from Dallas to Las Vegas. It's about a 2,500 mile round trip. I could sleep in the thing, but it just won't go fast. It just won't go up hills. I mean, it's not made for that. So this is my new hot rod truck. Again, it's a 2020 Ram 3500 Laramie, four x four, of course. This uh, has the, uh, uh, it doesn't have the new ASIN transmission. It's got the, I think it's called the 65, whatever it is. You guys will correct me in the comments. It's not the high output. Uh, I was told by people, unless you're going to be towing 35,000 pounds, do not get the high output because you are just gonna be going, driving around getting six, seven miles a gallon there's just not a point in it unless you're really hauling the heavy loads. A lot of people normally like to get the regular 2500 with the single wheel rear axle because it's so much more of a softer ride. If you're not gonna be doing heavy fifth wheel trailers, goosenecks and pulling more than 10,000 pounds, I think that I would probably rather have had the 2500 as well. It's just easier to maneuver, easier to park. And uh, it's just not as bumpy. A dually like this one is bumpy. The whole point of this truck was to haul heavy loads. Now, one of the first additions I put on this thing because it's so tall was the Amp Research powered steps. As you can see, they pop out here. Now, when you buy the limited edition, I think they come with them on, but I think Ram is just buying these and just sticking these on the trucks. That's what a dealer told me. You can buy these yourself for about 1700 bucks. The install is not really hard. There's a lot of videos out there on how to install them, and you can put these on your truck yourself. So that was one of the first upgrades I did. Okay, those are real cool. You close the door, and of course, they retract. Super clean. Now, Amp Research also sells these side steps, which I have extended. It pops out so that you can get back here. Uh, I think that's super handy, and it's clean, just kicks right up under there. Let me show you the other one that's in the back. That one was about 300 bucks. That one was like 1700 bucks. All right, this one is really popular. This is another AMP Research pro project, product rather. I think it's about 300 and something bucks. It just flips up under there cleanly. You're supposed to be able to just do this with your foot is the idea. And then you can stand on it. Now, to prevent tailgate theft, this has a solenoid retractability like this. All right, with a slow open so that when you lock the truck, you can't open it. But a party trick, you know, with the remote and also inside, you can drop it. Now I've got a headache rack back here. I'm taking to the powder coaters. We'll talk about that later. But that's what this is for. I do wish, you know, I was interested in possibly the Denali or the High Sierra that the GMC has. I like the split tailgate with the stairs and the handle and all that stuff, the old man truck. This isn't so bad. I mean, it's, it ain't, it, it's not too bad. You can get up here and, um, you know, it, it works. But uh, this is an essential, you gotta have this. Why they don't put this on there, I don't know. This should be a, that should be a thing. Ram just include that. Or they should put in the little steps here. I don't know why they're not, but it's so tall. I mean, I, I'm a 6'2 guy, I'm fairly agile. 
but getting in and out of this thing is something you got to do. Laying here in the bed is a uh, headache rack that I'm taking to the powder coater. It's made by Spider Industries. You see it's a spider web, basically. I ordered it in raw. They don't necessarily offer that. I special requested that because I'm taking it in to be powder coated a custom color. I wanted it done in red. They only offer it in black and white. And I had black one of these on my old 98 3500 Ram. Drove that thing just to death. And uh, after about a million miles, I decided to sell it. I think it actually had about 800,000 or something, something, I don't know. Anyway, so this is gonna be another video that we'll do later, but I wanted to get back here and talk about uh, this tank I bought. This is a UWS brand uh, transfer tank and toolbox. This holds a uh, 100 gallons of fuel and also has a pretty decent sized box. Uh, and uh, you can see in here that you know, I've put a rubber liner in there and I've just got some liquids and things in there that I'm holding. Pretty decent sized box. I have to say that I'll have a little bit of regret about this box for a couple of reasons and I'm going to explain why for this particular truck. One thing, I wanted this one uh, to be steel. The first one I ordered was an RDS, which is the aluminum diamond plate version. What I liked about that one is it fit about the height of the bed and uh, the box closed over the... Um, lid of this thing you know and it, it was a much smaller but when it arrived it was just beat up and it's made out of a really soft aluminum and almost every one of them i've seen is just dented to hell they're not very robust you know you could not do this on one of those boxes this thing is made of steel i'm standing on the lid of this box this thing is hefty hefty now there's a camera right here and the camera looks right down at that gooseneck ball and uh, gives you a little, draws a little digital line so that you can back up your ball. Well, I realized after I put this tank in, I can no longer see my ball. I can't see really anything, just except this box. <clears throat> now they make a camera relocation kit. Uh, there's, uh, I don't know who they is, but I know it's out there. And I'm gonna work on that. If I decide to keep this box, which I'm a little 50-50 on whether I am or not, I'm gonna relocate the camera and put it on the back side of the box right under the ball there. It won't have the digital line, but at least it'll, I'll be able to see it so I want to back it up. Now, the reason I wanted a 100-gallon reserve tank is this with the 50-gallon tank that comes on the long beds gives me 150 gallons of fuel, which gives me about 2,000 miles of range. But the main thing is, is diesel here in Dallas is like $3.40 a gallon, and in Vegas out in the desert, it's like five, six bucks a gallon. So it's not just about the range of being able to drive across the country without stopping, but it's about being able to fill up with fuel whenever you can find it. That's the important thing. But one of the things I learned is that if you know how basic gravity works, the box is up here, the fuel filler is there. And the way that these tie into the system is there's a T that goes into your filler neck. Uh, a little fuel line runs to it. And thank goodness there's a ball valve there because if you leave the fuel like on, it will fill up till it gets to the filler neck and then it'll just start pouring out. So you can't just leave the fuel on and have 150 gallons at access. What you have to do is wait till your tank is empty, turn the valve on, let it fill itself up and whatnot. Now, I was told that you're not allowed to do that, uh, that, that, that that's a problem. You're supposed to have a little transfer hose and then you're supposed to you literally have your own gas pump and uh, fill up your own tank that way. So I may have to switch it over to that. Right now, this is not hooked up. This is just sitting back here. So um, I'm trying to decide if I want to change this box out for a smaller one that's not as big. I, I probably think that 50 gallons, additional to the 50 gallons that you have, is way more than enough. 100 gallons, if you were getting 10 miles a gallon under full load, will take you a thousand miles. Now, if you're driving this thing around empty, which I don't know why you would, you'd be getting 13, 14 miles a gallon, 15 miles a gallon if you're hypermiling maybe. And you could drive, you know, coast to coast without having to stop for fuel. And maybe you want to do that. You can just pee in a Gatorade bottle like the uh, truckers and never stopped really really wanted to but um i wanted the long range tank simply because buying fuel in the desert is expensive and stupid okay now this is not the factory gooseneck uh this is made by b and w we're going to talk more about them here in just a second when i got this thing i could not figure out how this thing works on the driver's side wheel well above the wheel where the wheel liner is is a little uh, handle that you pull out and then lock uh, towards the front of the truck. 
I did not know that, could not find it. I had to crawl under here and figure this out. Um, this is called the turnover ball because I've already unlocked it. You should be able to, yeah, you can pull this out, flip it over, and then drop the ball down in there. And you have your choice of having the ball available to you or uh, having it upside down like that and locked in. Now you'll notice there's axle grease all over that. The reason is, is I could not for the life of me get this some bitch out. Luckily for me, the ball section was up and I sprayed a whole bunch of, uh, you know, PB blaster and whatnot on it and hammered it. And we had to use like a hydraulic jack to finally hoist it out of there. When you Google B&W turnover ball, you'll find videos about how to get these unstuck. So if you have one, you need to frequently, if you use it, you need to take it out, clean it. What I ended up doing was taking it over to my uh, wire brush and uh, cleaning it till it was shiny. Then I polished it and then I covered it with axle grease. You need to keep it nice and greasy because if that thing gets stuck, especially in that position, it is hard to get out. Now, the great thing about having the B&W turnover ball system is that whether or not you're using a gooseneck or a fifth wheel, you have options. Yeah, the lock for this thing is right under here. It's, it's, you're not gonna be able to see it, but it is, I recommend always wearing gloves because it, it can cut your finger. Um, but it's tough under there. It's a pain in the ass, but it works great. Okay, while we're on the subject of B&W, you've probably seen this hitch, this receiver. Man, I hate to have to go operating this thing, but this is like the greatest like ever. So basically, it's infinitely adjustable. You can loosen this thing. I say you can. Oh, is there, what am I doing wrong? Shouldn't this be spinning around? Oh, maybe you have to do both of them. Okay. Okay, yeah. So this is adjustable. You can spin it around, put it at any height you want. You put in the pins. Anyway, you get the idea. And this rotates. I wanted one of these because I've had lots of these. And quite frankly, I like that you can put it out of the way so it's not a shin breaker. Let me get this in there. And um, <clears throat> I, you know, with this and what I'm about to show you, I have the ability to haul basically every type of thing you would haul except for maybe a pintle hitch, which I could also put on here if I really wanted to. Make sure you lock these up because they cost damn near 400 bucks. Some little steel that I have a decent lock over here. I like that this is nice and clean so it's not going to kill your shins or whatever. It's a clean install. I like it. Thanks. Nice. Okay, here at my shop, I also have the BMW Companion fifth wheel hitch. The reason it's called a Companion is it works with that turnover ball system. It's got a post peg in there that goes right into that slot. You just pull the ball out. This thing drops down. These rest within the rails of the bed. And then you put the lock in and it locks. And this particular one allows you to, you know, move this around. It's too heavy. I can't move it right now. But anyway, you can slide this around, make it infinitely adjustable. These are about 2000 bucks. Now the saddle isn't on it. That has the coupler attachment. I'll show you that it's in the other room. You you want to try to get this thing as light as you can. It is heavy. This MF -er is heavy. It takes a couple of big brawny people to move it. They make it look like, Oh yeah, you're just toss it in there. Now, uh, like if you have a little gantry or something handy you back up to, that would come in handy. But the idea here is that I wasn't sure, I'm not sure which trailer I'm going to get. And I may have multiple trailers. I may have goosenecks. I may have with fifth wheels. I may have bumper pulls. I may have all of those. I have small car dollies that have smaller balls. I have a little boat has a medium sized ball. I have a big bumper pull has a full size largest ball. Uh, I can do fifth wheel, I can do gooseneck. So with this truck, I will be able to haul, if I wanted to go into business hot shotting or whatever, I'd be able to haul anything I want, all right? So for like three grand, you could get this, the turnover ball, the, the other thing, and you have the ability to haul just about every kind of trailer. Uh, and this thing will take whatever you throw at it, especially in this truck. I could show you the top of this thing, but you know what a fifth wheel looks like. This is the top of the fifth wheel. We just had it 
on this thing. I bought this used, by the way. I found this on Facebook Marketplace for a thousand bucks. Bought it for half price. You'll find people selling them because maybe they used to have a fifth wheel camper. They got rid of it. Maybe they downsized, whatever the reason. And uh, a little bit of cleanup, it'll be good as new. You know, after you use it a couple times, it's going to look like this anyway. So, uh, but we pulled the, I call this the saddle, but I pulled this off uh, just to make it lighter. And we set it over here. The dude also gave me this, uh, this little stand, you know, for putting under the trailer. But I hadn't even got to use it yet, but I have it. Okay, another accessory I bought for my truck. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it because it's a phone adapter and I'm shooting this on my iPhone 14 Pro. It's by Bullet Point. They make these uh, amazing phone adapter uh, kits and they're infinitely adjustable because you can have any size rod, any kind of a head, some charger heads. You can put it together the way you want, but the key point is this mounting grid up here that you can see. And, um, it goes right into the factory fittings and you can have, you know, one, two, three or whatever. You can have the arms articulated however you want. The way I have this, the phone sits right here just adjacent to the uh, vent. And this is the MagSafe adapter and it locks, the phone locks upright onto there like, like, like a rock. It works. This is carbon fiber. Uh, this thing is worth every penny. I'll try to put a link to these. I'm not affiliated with any of the products that I'm showing you today. I have no affiliation whatsoever. But I was so impressed with this thing. I ordered them for other vehicles as well. But this thing is amazing. And it is just rock solid. I've been trying to find, you know, a good solution for that. Now, quite frankly, this has the 12-inch screen with the Apple CarPlay. You can put your phone down there. But I still like having my phone available to me. And um, I highly, you know, it's just little things like this that uh, make the entire experience completely better. All right, I wanna start with the back of this truck. These aren't necessarily accessories, but some of the reasons that I wanted the Ram 2019 and up. Um, there are six cup holders back here. And by the way, I'm a big dude. I'm 6'2", 210 pounds. And this seat is like reclined and my knees are not even touching. Now this is the blackout edition of the truck. You know, I have a black interior and headliner and everything. The, uh, I'd love to show you the at night version of this where this is all lit up and the LEDs and everything, but we're not going to get into that. But let's just say that this is one of the nicest interiors that I have seen. Um, I went and looked at some of the Nunnallies. I looked at the King Ranch, um, and I was just the most impressed with this. I mean, you got four USBs here, two Cs, two regulars. You got rear air conditioning, 110 volt outlet plugs. Like I said, two cup holders, two cup holders, and then just in case, two more cup holders. Now I realize this is in Texas. Some of these are made for cups. Some of these are made for tacos, just whatever you want. But uh, you know, you've got some storage back here. You got speakers, you got grab handles. You got this nice Alcantara carbon fiber look, soft feel stitch leather. These seats are nice, multiple materials. You got perforated leather with Alcantara with uh, fine pebble grain leather just really well put together. I mean, this is a luxurious, really nice interior. But I want to show you some very cool things. There's a storage box down there. <clears throat> there is another storage box here, which I keep a tool kit in. But this is one of the things I was really impressed with. This seat goes right up like that. There's actually a nice light here. And then this folds down really simply. And then there's these little pop-outs here, right, that fill the gap. And now you have a flat floor, okay? So let me come around there. Now here you have another storage box. I keep various things in. Goes right up, just takes a few seconds to do this. Flat floor, they still retain the cup holders, which I think is strange. But if you were, so inclined if you really needed to. A full-size dude like myself could lay down back here and sleep with rear air conditioning, with electrical outlets. This back window opens as well. You could put a air mattress or something back here or just stuff. I find that I rarely ever use the bed uh, for much of anything. Most everything I wanna haul fits right into here you know i go to costco and stuff 
and uh, you can fit everything you need to get into this. Oh, there's another storage under that. I completely forgot. So storage galore in this thing. It is, it is pretty cool. Also, I recommend getting the long bed and not the short bed mega cab. Mega cab is going to give you a little bit more space. That's true. And I guess if you're using your truck for short range crew carrying situations where you may only use a bumper pull, um, the reason I say that is you only get the 50 gallon tank with the long bed. And uh, there's a lot of there's other things you lose in the mega cab. Uh, I think that this is the best configuration. I mean, truck's a little longer, but you got a full size bed. If I didn't have that tank in there, I could carry anything I wanted plywood, whatever. But the amount of room back here, if you're riding back here, you've got nice stereo, air conditioning, plugs, cup holders galore, electrical outlets, plug in your laptop, whatever. The back of this thing is very impressive. I mean, seriously, look at the build quality of this rear door. Alcantara soft feeling for your elbow, this um, carbon fiber look, the soft feel leather with the stitching. You know, you got a little bit of plastic right here, uh, but the, it's just, I think the build quality of this is really good. Um, this is luxury car stuff. Look at the speaker in this thing. It's a very, very nice door. Going back to my amp research uh, deployable running boards here. They, the way they're designed is they plug into your OBD2 port as well as almost everything now. So what I had to buy was this like splitter. I bought like a three or four headed OBD2 splitter that's tied up under there because I have other things I'm gonna show you. And uh, we plugged it in that way and we opted for the optional uh, override switch, which we put right here and it looks factory. You can, you can raise them or lower them at will. The reason you would wanna do that is let's say you wanted to wash them and you wanted to close the door, you could have them down or if you wanted to put them out beforehand or for some reason you didn't want them to come out because you were too close to a curb or something like that and then you could have them in auto mode. I just highly recommend getting the switch if you're gonna get this and this is where I put it because there was nothing here and it was easy to access. I'll show you a couple more tricks. Okay, you're gonna notice this seat belt extender. I really like these things. Now I like the tall ones they also come in a shorter version as well. And what these are great for, you know, other than just for being fat, but like this little one here, I'll put this in place. If you've ever placed something in your seat, it's heavy, like a bag of tacos, then all of a sudden your airbag light starts going off because it's detecting what it thinks is maybe a child in the seat from its pressure sensor uh, and it wants the uh, seat belt to be plugged in. By having this plugged in, it, all, it thinks the seat belt's always plugged in. If you put something in your seat or if you're one of the kind of people that's running around and not wearing your seat belt, just because you're on the farm or you're running around the shop and you just need to go from over here to over there, having this there prevents the seat belt alarm from going off. Uh, but that, I also like the fact the way that it, it, it rather than reaching way down, I like having it up here like this, where I can get to it, because then it's like, it just changes the position. I don't want it to hit my microphone, but it changes the position on your shoulder and this in a way that's just much more comfortable. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link down in the description where you can get these off of Amazon. They're only a couple of bucks. Um, I think that there's been a lot of videos about this truck and you know all the different storage options how this slides around how there's multiple storages here the amount of storage here is crazy i mean you can fit a full size like igloo cooler in here down in there is an electrical outlet you got four more usbs with auxiliary jacks you got trailer brakes here that are adjustable four wheel drive two wheel drive um and on the steering wheel you have gear limits you have other things but the reason i wanted the dodge over the other trucks i was seeing was not just the amazing interior. Well, it was really, it was actually, I'm going to say it was 100% the amazing interior, interior, but it was also the adaptive cruise control option with the lane assist. So, uh, my recommendation, let me just let me adjust this for you. My recommendation, if you're looking to buy one of these used or ordering one, 
is look for particular options. Why anybody would order one of these without the 12-inch screen is beyond me. There's people out there that'll say, oh, I, I want the smaller screen because I don't want to have the touch screen because of the buttons. All the buttons are here. I have physical buttons for temperature, mode, fan, auto, physical volume knobs, physical tuning knobs, physical controls for the front and rear, um, you know, defrosters, recirculation, um, physical buttons that operate things like the exhaust brake, the tow haul mode, uh, physical buttons to turn on and off the front and rear um, parking detectors, physical buttons. For, so everything that the screen, not everything, but all the main stuff you need is here at physical touch. The, having a knob is the greatest thing. It's I'm old school guy. I like, I like to be able to do that, right? No matter what. Even though I could change the volume here on the steering wheel, uh, I like to be able to do it that way. So there's really no disadvantage that I can find having the 12 inch screen over getting the smaller screen. There's people out there that go, well, it doesn't matter anyway because when you go into the camera mode or an Apple CarPlay mode, it's only gonna be here. That's true. But then you still have all this other digital real estate for other things to happen. I can have my entire map here and my entire stereo stuff here or all of my climate control stuff here or all of my other links. I have uh, the Uconnect links where it'll show me fuel prices or weather or mapping. It just, it does everything. The, the stuff that it does on the screen and in the dash is incredibly impressive. We'll talk about some of the camera system, the adaptive cruise control. You have cameras here in the front. You have sensors that go all the way around here, coming around here under this mirror, cameras and other sensors that are adjustable for blind spot detection for not only the truck, but the truck and trailer. So with all the cameras all the way around, you have the 360 top-down view. I can't tell you how essential this is for a truck like this, especially a dually. You'll find these trucks backed into parking spaces perfectly between the lines. Those are guys that have the 360 top down. Look, you don't got to be machismo macho and go, I know how to grab a truck. I don't need no special cameras. Listen, there's nothing wrong with using a little bit of technology to make life easier. Being able to look into the back of your bed, look out the back of the truck, look out the front of the truck, so that when you're pulling up, you can't see anything 10 feet in front of you. I pull all the way up an inch away from the parking pole or whatever, because I have a camera and I can see it. Now I turn off the parking sensors because I don't want to hear the little beep, beep, beep noise, but I can visually see. Also, another thing is, as soon as I park somewhere, even if it's just in a regular space, one of the first things I do is I will close my mirrors. You hit a little button and these mirrors close up simply because people walking by this thing, that thing sticks way out. It sticks way out, right? So ha having this, having that not in the way, like when I drive through, a, go through a drive through, I always close my mirrors and use my cameras instead. Something else I want to mention about the mirrors, and this is just a pet peeve of mine. And th I'm talking to you bro dozer dudes. The guys who put lights in your wheels and wear like flat brim hats and say bra a lot. Your mirror does not go like this unless you're towing a trailer. You fucking poser. I said it. A little small upgrade I did on the fuel filler is on these trucks, they don't have a fuel cap. They just have a sealed filler there. Ah, I bought this. This little fuel cap that goes on there is magnetic. Just sticks wherever you want it. I wouldn't put it there, but I wanted to demonstrate it. Anyway, it's nice and green. It's pretty. I like it. I also got the DEF one. Even though this has a DEF uh, cover, I put it on there. Now, people are going to ask me, are you going to delete the truck? No, I am not going to delete the truck. I'm gonna register this truck in Nevada at my home in Las Vegas, which requires diesel testing. And quite frankly, I'm not like a tree hugger or anything, but it doesn't seem to be affecting anything. I just don't see the point in doing it. It's not legal in most places. It's a felony EPA violation. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I don't mind putting $13 worth of diff in this thing every 5,000 miles. This thing has so much goddamn power it's so fast with the Banks power stuff I have on it, which we'll get to. I just don't see a point in deleting all this stuff. And I know there's a lot of arguments against it, but for me living in the West Coast, it's not something that's an option for me if I want to inspect the truck. 
people living here in Texas where I have the truck now, delete away, go ahead. But I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna leave the truck alone. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up so that we have, have everything running. Got a hot rod coming through, look at that. All right, I wanna show you um, how this screen works. Now, a lot of people have demonstrated this before, but I just wanted to go into it. Now, it automatically detected that it's kind of roasty outside. It says it's 97, I don't think it's that hot, but it automatically turned on my vented seat, which feels nice. I'm getting some night. Let me turn this fan down so it's not too loud. Look at that, I'm doing that with physical controls. How about that, guys? Didn't have to go into the screen at all. But here in the screen, you can see I got heated seat, vented seat, heated steering wheel. I never thought I would like that, but it, it's really cool because it happens really quickly, okay? Passenger has the same options. You can dim the mirror. Now, this one does not have the video mirror up front. I wish I had gotten that option on the truck. If I'd have ordered it new, I would have. I think it only comes on the limiteds, but you can order it on your truck. Highly recommend having that. Uh, but if I go into backup camera here, I'm looking out the back of my tailgate. There's a Fiero back there, look at that. Now my cargo camera, uh, I got some schmutz on it I need to clean off. And not, like I said, since I put that tank back there, I can't see the ball anymore. But when you turn the wheel, you can see that its guidance uh, also changes. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. I'm gonna have to figure out a solution for that. Uh, when I go into the surround camera, and I don't know how well you can see this, but I can see all the way around, I can see this fire lane here, I can see all the way around. And folding the mirrors doesn't affect it because the cameras are not mounted to that portion of the mirror. So when I open and close the mirrors, it's not affected. Um, now I can go into this and I can choose to just look out the front. When I'm parking into something, I can see the front there. I can just, I can look out the front section with the surround. Uh, I can look into my car cargo and I can adjust that line uh, to work with whatever I'm working with. So I can go through here and this comes in really, really handy. So when I'm pulling into a space and there's a, you know, pull there, I can see what's happening. And that comes in really, really handy. Now, unfortunately, I can't plug in my Apple CarPlay simply because I'm using the phone. But, you know, you can go into select source. I have it on Sirius XM. When you subscribe to their service, which I highly recommend, you get all these amazing channels, but you also get apps. You go into apps, you have all these other things, and you can adjust these little widgets in any place you want for your, have your favorites handy to you. So like I need to go in here and adjust it and put my favorite widget and put the front camera on there because I like to use the front camera when I'm pulling into a place. But when you go into the traveling system, I can pull up fuel prices. Uh, I can go in, choose the type of fuel I want. I can find by price and it'll show me, it's basically like Gas Buddy the app showing me here in Texas, this is April 2023, getting diesel at $3.40. Thanks, Brandon, used to be two bucks. Anyway, I can do that by distance or price or brand, depending on if I'm looking for a particular kind of thing. That's one of the apps that, that is on here, along with national weather. When you're doing hot shot, long haul things, I wanna see what the weather is somewhere else. So right now it's a clear day everywhere. How about that? That's pretty awesome. But I can look at the weather on the whole planet on, with this thing. Um, and then you have, you know, sports, traffic. The, look, I mean, this thing will tell you where there's a movie playing. I mean, I don't need this. I don't know why that's here. So I think you can adjust the apps that go in here as well. The navigation screen, you're getting into Tesla territory. You got this great big navigational screen here. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's a pretty neat little thing. Okay, go back to apps. All right, uh, here on the, I have these buttons here. I have the front parking and rear parking off. I have my tow haul off uh, and I have, it has a full Jacobs brake exhaust brake system that really will slow the truck down. Then you have your uh, controls here for your trailer brakes. And I'll have to show you what's happening in this crazy dash because this dash is really cool. Let me uh, see if I can't get that fixed up, fixed up here. All right, I had to pull into the shade over here so I could, I wanna show you this uh, steering wheel first of all. If you're shopping for one of these trucks, used or you're ordering one look for this button here this is the adaptive cruise control button when you turn that on you'll get this little indication there and then um, there is a gap control here that allows you adjust how much gap between you and the next vehicle 
If you're not familiar with adaptive cruise control, what this will do is speed you up and physically apply the brakes. And it will basically pace and follow the car in front of you. So when you're in stop and go traffic or something isn't pulls in front of you, the truck will stop to, to a complete stop, but then it will resume. You can ride with your feet flat on the floor without touching the brake or the gas, and this thing will drive for you. With the lane assist, which this is the override, it will, if I pull up, uh, let me go to lane assist, which I think is, let me see, driver assist, okay. In driver assist mode, show it shows the lanes, and what will happen is, if you wander from lane to lane, it will steer itself back into place. Now, it will give you a little alarm every time it does that, and it'll ask you to keep your hands on the wheel. You can't just take your hands off the wheel and let it drive by itself. But driving through these roads, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, West Texas, whatever, being able to set the cruise on this thing and have it steer itself so you can eat a taco, this helps a lot. It really does. And you have all the gauges you need. You got speedometer, you got fuel, you got... Um, Death and you got tachometer, but let's take a notice here at these little corners. Notice the top corner has a time and then the temperature and then these gauges look like they're real gauges. Those are digital gauges. Let me show you something cool, right? So I can go into my steering wheel here. I can go to uh, vehicle info. Vehicle info, I can scroll through this, right? And I can look at every type of thing, my hours, my pressures, temperatures, you know, like, look, I got trans temp. Where did it go? Oh, I just lost it. I just, I, I, where did it, boost pressure. I was hitting the wrong button. There we go. Trans temp. You don't want a hot tranny. I've pissed one off before. You don't want to do it. Listen, um, oil pressure, right? Boost pressure, particulate filter, oil life, fuel filter, battery voltage. I mean, you can just exhaust brake. Uh, you can go through here and look at all these different things. Speedometer, nobody needs that. Now, screen setup. Now, this is what we want to look at here. This button here, you can go into the screen setup. And now, notice how this one is highlighted upper left. Let's go into that, right? You can change that to be like the outside temp or a compass or nothing or fuel filter or exhaust brake or boost pressure. I think you get the idea, folks. But what makes that cool is that, like, let's say you're towing heavy and you got to keep an eye on your exhaust brake and your and your trans temperature and things. These are things you might want to need to know. And you can go in and, and keep all these things at the ready so that, you know, and you have, you know, uh, four different places on here that you can do that. So that's a really cool thing. Um, you can also, you have messages. You get a text message, it'll come up through here. Uh, you got your audio, that way you can have your full-size map and have your audio here if you want. Trailer towing brake, you know, you can uh, over, come, reach over here and adjust your brake and, and how much uh, pressure you want that brake to be um, for your trailer brakes. Um, your trip infos, fuel economy, as if there is any. So there's, these, are, these are some great things. And you know, over here on this thing, like I said, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're doing your different apps, if I had my Apple CarPlay, if I plugged the phone in, I'd be able to show you that. And you could have Apple CarPlay here and a map here. You know, the navigation screen is very Tesla-like. It's pretty cool, full-size thing. You know, you can go into your climate controls and this is infinitely adjustable for both people. Um, I got the seat cooler on right now and I'm really liking it. I'm gonna, matter of fact, I'm gonna kick it up to high. Let's see, there we go. Get that taint really chilled. Oh yeah, daddy likes. I don't know why they haven't made the Texas edition vented seat that actually vacuums so that you can press a button and when you let out a, uh, a, a ruthless camel choking Taco Bell fart, you could hit a button and it will vacuum that fart into the seat. Imagine what a great thing. Dodge, you need to get this together. All right, you know, you got max AC, recirculation, um, you know, just whatever. Go into your media, let me turn that down because it's it's gonna really blast us. Um, I like Yacht Rock Radio, what do you like? You like, uh, you, you got all these different uh, presets up here. You can go into Ozzy's Boneyard, let's see what they got, a little rainbow, I love it. I, I it's, oh, that's one of my favorites, I can't play the music, but must be just like living in paradise with this thing. Let me tell you, the the trailer brake right here, the Jake brake right here, tow haul, 
just having all this stuff at your fingertips, being able to move this back, you've got um, you know plenty of storage you've, for whatever you want to keep in there. I got a plug in here. You got lots of room for your Second Amendment rights in here. Just let me assure you. Um, and you can operate this whole thing with your phone. You can lock, unlock, and start it with your phone if you have the uh, Uconnect app service, which which is part of the Sirius XM. Now up here, because this is the fancy schmancy model, I can uh, open up this really cool uh, sunroof, moonroof, whatever you call it. You can close it. I like that there's a separate button for the tilt, because how many times have you closed it and then tilted it and you're like, oh, I didn't want to do that, All right? So, and then you can black it out. And then check out the back window. There's a button here. You have a, a powered, that's just sick. Come on, man, that's just badass. A power back window. That's just really nice. A garage door opener, as if this would fit in a garage. It won't, um, but uh, you could program that to a gate. And then again, I wish I had the digital screen there. All right, now over here is something special. We're gonna have to talk about this in another video. But I have this thing hot-rodded with what's called the Pedal Monster, and we're gonna talk about this in another video because with this thing, I can go in and uh, do all sorts of cool stuff. I can go into my bank's modules and I can go into the Pedal Monster and I can put this thing on rock and roll. And let me tell you, uh, this truck is a hot rodder. So, um, oh, this is, this is something cool. Look at this button, see this button? When you activate that button, right? You can now control your um, outside, the, the outside uh, mirror. See that, the little one. How cool is that? That's pretty, I mean, that's, that's, that's cool stuff. That's really cool stuff. You have controls down here that operate, you know, the brightness for your screen, the, the headlights, the fog lights, all that kind of stuff. This also has automatic bright control, like when you have your brights on, which, you know, I don't have on right now, but you can turn your brights on and if another car is coming, it'll automatically turn them off. Over here, you got this fancy schmancy glove box, which I've got some toilet paper in there and some water. You never know, you never know. Taco Bell, you never know. But how nice is that? Um, then you have your other glove box down there. Keep your gloves. Got a lot of gloves. All right, you have a place to put your phone here, a little tray here for gum and roll aids and all that kind of stuff. Um, nothing here on this. This is just textured. But I, I hope this is a detailed view that maybe you haven't seen of this truck and what to look for if you're going to buy one. Um, and, um, you know, it's... It's a nice rig, man. It is nice. All right, this is the, the, the haunting question that I'm sure you have been wanting to ask yourself. Now, I bought this truck used. It's only a couple of, um, you know, I know you're gonna ask about the stupid tent. I don't know why it is this way, but when I got it, the tent only goes to here. I don't know. Maybe you know in the comments why that was. Maybe it was to avoid like tent detection or maybe there was a visor here. I don't know why the tent is this way. I'm gonna have it ripped off and I'm gonna replace it with a nice gray ceramic tent. Okay, you wanna know, what did I pay for this all? What did I pay for all this? Okay, um, I bought the truck used with 148,000 miles on it, three years old. I paid 58,500 for the truck here in Texas. I've put easily more than 10 grand into the truck in the last you know, couple of weeks doing all the stuff we're doing to it. And um, so I've got roughly 70,000 in the truck. Ordering the truck new would have cost 100 grand. We all know this. Let's demonstrate this, this amazing parking. You really can just park with this and you don't really need the mirrors. But my little tripod is sitting out there. My little Fiero's back there. I don't wanna run into that. But I mean, look how accurate this is. Go forward, it shows me forward so I can pull forward. Tell me that's not awesome. It is, you know it is. So yeah, buying one of these in Texas, uh, I, I gotta be honest, I've searched the entire country looking for one of these trucks. I was looking at the Denali, the King Ranch, and why did I settle on the Dodge? It was for the interior. 
I originally was going to get a Ford King Ranch because I like Fords, but I would have been told by a lot of my mechanic friends that the later model Fords just stay away from them. They're not as good of trucks. Even though they're powerful, they're fast, they're great trucks, but when you need something, it's a cab off experience and it's 10 grand. I was actually pushed towards the GMCs, the Denali's, but I just couldn't find one. And it seemed like every one of them came in black. And I don't want a black truck in Vegas. I want a white truck or a silver truck. So that was another reason I wanted this truck. And I love the black interior and black out edition, black wheels. So um, I don't like that saddle interior that the King Ranch always has. You know, my friend just bought a GMC Ultimate Denali and it's got this baseball glove interior. Looks like Jif peanut butter. Some people like it. I'm just not into it. You know, good for you if you like it. But I would prefer the black interior. I just like it better. Um, so, the, you know, the design of the of the Dodge, the Ram, whatever you want to call it, um, this Cummins motor, I mean, is it the fastest? Is it the most powerful? No, maybe the others beat it by a hair. But everybody who's ever owned one of these trucks knows a million miles is nothing. I've owned these before. My 1998 24 valves Cummins was an unkillable machine and I'm sure it's still running. The dash might have turned into dust and that truck will fall apart around that motor and the motor will still be sitting somewhere in the junkyard running. That's the thing about these trucks. So uh, there's been some people out there I've seen complaining about the 2022s having a few issues here and there. Maybe I'll have an issue here and there, but I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna have a good experience. Here this truck is with 150,000 miles on it and it looks mint. There's not a scratch on it, it looks mint. Okay, so I think it's holding up really well. The interior is holding up really well. The bolsters are holding up really well. And um, I decided to do some preventative maintenance on the truck uh, that, I, that added power and I think will prevent some issues in the future. So like I, I've got about 70,000 in the truck. Now, what I was saying about Texas is if you're anywhere in the country, no matter where you are, I recommend buying a truck out of, you know, Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, flying in and driving it home. This will save you ten to twenty thousand dollars. I looked at a truck just like this that was in Vegas. They wanted a hundred and ten thousand dollars for a used uh, one of these trucks that had like ten thousand miles on it. So by Buying this truck with 150,000 miles, I feel 100% confident. We all know that 150,000 miles on a truck like this means nothing. I will easily get another 100,000 miles, 200,000 miles out of the truck effortlessly. Not even worried about it, not even a little bit. So um, there's that. Okay guys, this is my 2020 Ram Laramie edition, blackout edition, Dually. I can feel my weenie getting smaller already. I'm not gonna squat the truck. I'm not putting lights in the wheels. I'm not doing any of that dumb shit. I bought a truck to do truck stuff with. If you are not hauling trailers in excess of 10,000 pounds, do not buy one of these trucks. If you're just driving it around to look like some kind of badass, you do not need this truck. I don't understand why people buy trucks and they don't do truck stuff with them. They just drive them around. Go, I'm driving a truck. Okay. I don't get it. It's a tractor, it's a tool. I'm gonna to use it to haul fifth wheels, goosenecks, bumper pulls in excess of 10,000 pounds, cross the country back and forth. That's what's gonna be happening with this truck. Okay. I've never understood the, uh, the whole truck. I'm not a truck guy. I'm not, this whole truck thing, the guys that go to SEMA and they have the big chromey, the goo, I'm not into it. I don't get it. If you came to this channel looking for that, this is not for you. You need to go back to the gay porn channel you were looking at originally. Okay. My advice to you is if you're not gonna be putting a trailer that goes into the bed of this truck, do not get the 3500 dually. It's bouncy, it's heavy. If you're only doing bumper pull of less than 15,000 pounds, go for the 2500, much softer ride, get basically the same truck. I also think that if you can find one of these used and save 20 or 30 grand, probably a good idea because the chances of something happening to this truck within the warranty period is very slim. It's just very slim. So I think that's the best way to do it and buy one in Texas and drive it to wherever you are. Now, if you wanna know more about this truck, I'm gonna do a secondary video that'll be linked onto this video as soon as it's finished about all the Banks power upgrade hot rod stuff I've done to this truck. That's coming up next. So subscribe if you like what you heard and you wanna see more. 
If you want to know about the other stuff that we do here, like our movie prop cars, my daily blogs, and all the other fun stuff, that's another reason you should subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Video Bob. Mm-hmm.